Hello, and welcome to our Dog Biz Pro help video series. In this video, we will be explaining how to set up online registration for events. To start, you would just want to navigate to your admin module by clicking on the module dropdown and selecting admin. Once you're inside of your admin module, you would want to click on the setup tab, online registration, and configuration in order to be brought to your online registration configuration page. Once you're inside of this page, you would want to scroll down and find the section titled Event Registration Settings. This section will allow you to set various settings for your events. The first setting showing inside of this section is the Allow Clients to Register for Events checkbox. If you wanted to allow clients to register online for your events, you would just want to make sure that this checkbox is checked. So again, if you want to allow clients to register online, you would just want to make sure that you have this checkbox checked. The next setting showing inside of this section is the Count Pending Registrations Towards Total Registrations checkbox. This setting will allow you to have pending registrations count towards your total registration limit. For example, let's say you had a registration level that only allowed two dogs. If you did not check this checkbox, then a client could be registered for that event, but still be in the pending status, and the registration would not be count towards the maximum of two dogs. If you had confirmed the client's registration, then they would count towards the total registration limit, but again, as long as they were in the pending status, then they would not count towards that total registration limit. So again, if you wanted those pending registrations to count towards that total registration limit, you just want to make sure that that checkbox is checked. The next setting showing inside of this section is the Add Clients as Pending when Registering Them for Events Internally checkbox. This setting applies to manual registrations. If you wanted manual registrations to be automatically confirmed, then you could leave this checkbox unchecked. If you wanted manual registrations to be put into the pending status first, then you would want to make sure that this checkbox is checked. The next setting showing inside of this section is the Days Before Start to Close Event Registration setting. This setting will determine how long your event registration will stay open for. For example, if you wanted to close registration for your events one day before they were supposed to start, you could actually set this text box to 1. So with this set to 1, your event registration would actually close one day before the event is actually set to start. This section also supports negative numbers as well, so if you wanted to close registration after the event has already started, let's say one day after the event has started, you could use a negative number in order to do that. So you could actually put negative 1, and that would close registration one day after the event has actually already started. The next setting showing inside of this section is the Public Registration tab text setting. This setting will determine what the Events tab will show up as on the Client Registration Portal. If you wanted to change what the tab was titled, you could change that here. As a reminder, any change that is made inside this section will only change on the Client Registration Portal, and it is only a visual change so it will still have the underlying events logic to it. But let's say for whatever reason you wanted this to be called test instead of events, you'd go ahead and make that change here. So with that saying test, if a client went to the client registration portal, instead of seeing an events tab, they would actually see a test tab showing there. If they clicked on that tab, it would take them right to your events section. The last area showing inside of this section is titled autoresponders. Here is where you're able to assign your general event autoresponders. If no registration levels are created, then the event would use the general autoresponders that you have assigned at this location. If you do have registration levels created for your event, you would actually assign those autoresponders to that specific registration level when you're actually creating the registration level itself. So again, if you did not have any registration levels set up for your event, you could assign general autoresponders to this location here. So again, if you wanted to assign a registration autoresponder, you could click on the registration dropdown and choose an autoresponder. The same for the confirmation, as well as the registration removed and the waiting list autoresponder. Once you're finished making your changes inside of this section, you can click Save in order to actually update your changes. Hopefully that helps and explains how to set up online registration for events.